Hello everyone and welcome back to OGA Rainbow Six Pit for one of the very last playdays. We've gotten closer and closer to the end of these qualifiers, but we are far from out of the woods yet. I am Captain Fluke and I am joined by Sternab and we are ready to jump into another night. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at the bracket. Yeah, let's have a look at how things have played out across North America. Don't forget this is our penultimate playdate for North America and you can see in the top quarterfinal, we have Space Station, who've 2 0 their way to a semi final place, and now we're going to have to decide who they'll go against. Rogue versus Sonics will be our first matchup of the night, along with Luminosity versus Rise, and then later we'll have EG versus Obey Alliance. So, some pretty interesting matches coming up given the relegations results of last night. Yeah, I think it's a fair thing to say that some emotions may be running uh, for following some of these teams today, and obviously there is kind a. Um, there's a term in North America uh -huh. called Marvin's Room. Okay. And I feel like, for those of you who know that term and are familiar with that, that Rogue and Sonics are definitely there right now. Yeah. So let's see kind of how that game goes. Obviously, it's, it's a fair thing to also kind of look at Obey's game at the end of the night yep. as well with their success that they had last night because who knows what they're going to be bringing to this play day today. Obviously, we're hoping a lot, but the last time we saw this in this tournament was before the relegation match, and I think it's fair to say they were a little bit relaxed in how they were playing their game. So it'll be nice to kind of see them go up against a pro league team as a pro league team for the first time. Yeah, no, it will be. I think that's definitely one of the most interesting matches of the night, that EG haven't looked that great. They almost did choke quite hard against Shrug, who we thought weren't really going to stand a chance in their match, but then they almost took it. So that'll definitely be an interesting game. It is, of course, Obey's first game as a Pro League team. Big congratulations to them, of course. And uh, things things are looking good. But let's get into our first matchup of the night. It's going to be Sonics versus Rogue. Let's have a look at the map bands and see where we're going to be going. So during the online Pro League season, Sonics are undefeated to Rogue. Yeah, and that's the kind of... You know, it, it's one of those situations where obviously everyone kind of knows how last night went down for them. And it's not a great story, but they're two teams that have this kind of... This is the moment where you're at your kind of bottom of the barrel and you go, all right, what can we... What last bits of the gas canister have we got left? Yeah. And this could be a match to kind of... You know, a run. It can be a swan song or it can be a nail in an unfortunately put together coffin. I guess we will find out how bad this week can really get. Either way, in terms of the map, as you said, currently, um, in terms of the Pro League season, as you said, Sonics, they won both games. One was on Cafe, one was on Villa. It was a 7-5, 7-4, respectively. It, so, you know, I'm kind of curious where they're going to want to go because, obviously, if you look at last night, Villa and Cafe were both banned by uh, Rogue throughout the uh, matchup, and then uh, Bank aboard by Sonics. Yeah, but we did actually see Sonics go to Cafe last night, and... Uh... Things weren't looking too good for them there against Obey, but we'll have a look at what the bans are going to be, as we Rogue who starts out the bans by banning Villa. I think that's a fair ban for them, given how strong Sonics have been in the past on Villa. Definitely throughout also their CL season, Villa, a very, very good map for Sonics. So Rogue, definitely a good ban coming out for them. This is a really weird matchup as well, because normally we'd say, okay, like you know, this team beat that team in the Pro League season, therefore the team that won that game should win, win this game, really. But it doesn't really normally work out like that for this one because Rogue, historically, in best of threes, are much better than Sonics. But then you look at Sonics' recent DreamHack performance, then they knocked out FaZe in groups and they made it to quarters. And now you're thinking, like, are Sonics the better team here, even though they finished lower in by only one point during the Pro League season, but they did still finish lower. Sonics got a bad bank. I think that's a fair ban given what a disaster they were having against August on bank. And Rogue 7 2 bank last yes. night so that was one of the, that was the map that they managed to take and they took it in style so that's kind of an obvious one to really take out of and as you said sonic's kind of struggled on it with august this leaves a couple of maps open and optionable rogue are going to opt for border which is one that they've had some success on i think it's something that yeah. kind of plays well into them and you know it gives them the ability to kind of treat this match as a bit of a you know a bit of a frag fest go with your gunners and and see how you can take them apart because they've been as i said successful on border it's also not been that great of a map for Sonics, although you know in the in the first half of the season, obviously they're having a they had a pretty rough time with things. They did take SSG to border there, I remember, and they didn't have a great time there. They took Secret there during the Allied Minor and didn't have a great time there either. I feel like Sonics have a good idea about how they want to play the border, though, and I feel like that should be a pretty even matchup. But Rogue, yeah, as you said, historically this is a good map for them. Interesting what Sonics will pick here because they don't have an amazing map pool. 
but they will actually go back to cafe. Back to cafe? I mean, I, <laughs> we'll see what happens, I think is the only real thing that we can say there. Obviously, for those who somehow are uh, watching Sonic today and didn't watch the match yesterday, uh, they pulled one round last night in the in the playoff games. Uh, and then, to be fair, when they played their last matchup against Orglus, they did 7-3 this. So, yep. you know, past two games for them, it's been one result and it's been the other. I guess we'll see what they can kind of pull out, especially because Rogue do ban Cafe. So it's one that they generally don't kind of opt to. Clubhouse is going to be the next removal from Sonics, and this leaves Rogue with the choice of Coastline or Consulate. It's kind of interesting how Sonics' attitude towards Clubhouse has changed quite a lot. Because during the first half of the Pro League season, teams would very consistently ban Clubhouse against Sonics. But recently, it's really fallen out of favor with them. And, well, I mean, I guess we won't know everything about that, but I'm going to guess some scrim results weren't that great for them on Clubhouse. And they've kind of shifted their mentality somewhat. But Cafe's been a decent map for them, and Villa's been a decent map for them as well. Rogue will remove Coastline, and we'll be left with Consular. I think Coastline's a decent ban for them, because Rogue didn't do great on Coastline last night. But also, Sonics did manage to pull a draw against Luminosity during the regular yeah. season. Yeah, and last night, when they were on Coastline, Sonics managed to get it to max OT. So they yeah. did put in a performance on that map, and it's one, as you said, that didn't quite fall to the favor of Rogue previously. So this is kind of... I think it's an expected set of bans. I think the only thing that's going to be hard to expect is how this game is going to play out. So let's not waste any more time and jump into our first map of this play day, which is going to be Border. So... <laughs> Should be an interesting one. Sonic's immediately going to take Jackal immediately off the board. This is going to be a really interesting and weird kind of matchup because you don't really know where these two teams are sitting kind of mentality-wise at the moment. Obviously, some disappointing results from them last night, but we can see Capital banned off the border from Rogue. That is kind of a standard ban for border, I guess. Yeah. Normally... It makes things like half yeah. wall a much trickier position to sure, play. It sure. allows you to control corners that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get quite round to, like on monitors and CCTV. Yep. It's, it's a pretty standard removal. So I'm going to guess that Sonics are going to remove Echo off the board since if history says right that Sonics don't really have a strong Echo player, but they do have a very strong Maestro player in Goddess. So we'll see how border does go down. It'll be Sonics who start on the defense since it was a rogue map pick. Sonics will get to pick the sides and they've picked to go to defense. So, I mean, I really just have no idea where this matchup is going to go. I think that, honestly, Sonics are the favorites here. Statistics would kind of lead you to believe, but it, as I said, you've got to look at the position of these two teams. Yep. We have seen some teams kind of get in this situation, and, you know, it's not the first major teams to kind of fall foul of the way things have gone. And I, it's maybe the longest running. I think Rogue is to have the spot in pro league and then drop down so it's a big shake up and there's some <laughs> big kind of classical ones it's this, this yeah yeah expect those all, <laughs> all night i think um but then at the same time you know you look at teams like secret and the kind of resurgence that they've had post them having a pretty off season and then you also look at how penta have kind of fallen Penter, apart the past Penter couple Bond of play games after falling down there's two oh, ways yeah. penta have been on a very downhill yeah. kind of spiral right now but yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of just look at the recent results from Sonics and I say that Sonics is the more together team, especially with Slebin and Gonfi coming into this lineup. They have done wonders, especially Gonfi in particular, has done absolute wonders for this roster. Even though they couldn't make it work yesterday, they can still make it work here. Of course, the winner of this matchup goes against Space Station, who historically are one of the best online qualifier teams in all of North America. I think Bosco's only ever lost one online qualifier. So, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it's another thing worth considering, obviously, is whoever wins this then has to go up against SSG, um, who obviously looked very, very good in their previous game. They're kind of, you know, they're a well put together team. They're a well balanced team and they're looking for that land spot on the other side of the bracket. Yeah, you still got some big names, but SSG are arguably the biggest name and oh, kind yeah. of putting in the best performance so far across 100%. this stuff. Well, we'll see how Rogue wants to kick things off, but it is going to be an opening frag already coming out from Easily. That Maestro player got us straight off the board that we were already talking about, and that is a great opening pick coming out from Easily there. CC Control will start to go into the favor of Rogue, and we'll have a look what kind of push they do want to do here. It's uh, kind of interesting because you normally see, when Gridlock is on the board for Rogue, you normally see Eclipse picking that up. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, I guess we'll have to kind of look at how they want to play this in terms of who's bringing what tonight as well. Because it's always something where in a game like this, where you're trying to you know, test new things and try new things, once you're kind of in this position where, well, this is in a way all you're really playing for now. There's nothing else massively on the table in the immediate see You've got still a potential to get somewhere with this tournament. So why not try some new stuff? Because the previous stuff you've been trying hasn't really come to fruition. Super suffering the effects of, well, everything being thrown at the armory wall and it's going to ping it off for Neptunes to double up. But in the meantime, Vertical, bringing the gridlock, has slew superpower player Slebin on the far side of the staircase. Gomfi is looking for any kind of aggression on this central stairs area, but is otherwise going to try and pull back and double up upstairs. But Super, in the meantime, manages to pull the body back in their favor with Gomfi finding the double and Slashug actually putting down the man inside armory. Now is a thermite down. He didn't manage to get open the wall, but Neptune's has managed to recover the position now behind the half wall. And I just said a very hard position to try and get out here. Especially with the lack of utility that Rogue actually have in terms of like needs, or as you say, the Capital ban has definitely kind of affected that position on the half wall. It should be an easy place for them to go through. Gunfi will recognize he did get droned. He's gonna push all the way up metal. He's gonna get droned out though. They know he's there. He's gonna try and push up. He does still have that nitro in his back pocket. Neptune's gonna boost himself. He's gonna try and retake over the archives control. It looks like Rogue's position is gonna be compromised inside of that area. Neptune's still very worried about his flank, however, as Eclipse finds Gonfi, it's all for Neptune's to do in a 3v1 in our very first round. 40 seconds left to go on the clock. Rogue have got plenty of time to make this work. They have the 90 hold down. Slash is gonna to start to plant a few. Neptune's wide peeks out. He does see one, but almost gets taken down. But there he goes, and Rogue will take the first round. Well, that kind of came together quite well for Rogue. There was a bit of a bit of battle in the middle where things started to swing at least a little bit in the favor of Sonics, but you've got to give credit to how kind of coordinated the collapse there was from the side of Rogue. With the gridlocks restricting all the movement on long, they kind of were able to funnel all the attention to places where they had their own attention. Uh, we didn't get to quite see it, but I think easily managed to pick up that opening frag because Goddess tried to put her Maestro Camp on the top of the lockers bit. So, like, she would jump up on the monitor, yep. go over that way, and, like, kind of run across, go into the lockers, and you put it down there. And as she does that, easily shoots through the door and kills her. It's a very common pre-fire position these days, and if you're very late with that kind of setup, you can get punished for it. I'm not 100% sure that's what happened. That's the only way you can figure out that a Maestro would get picked that early. And I think that's a major reason why Sonic's just lost that round. Well, both French ACOGs doubling up either side of Goddess. Potentially going to see some more longer angles held here in an attempt at being a little bit more, let's say, counter-aggressive this time. Try and stop Rogue before they start to be able to stop you, as you said, we saw them in the previous round being able to pick apart some of what uh, Sonics were trying quite early on. Curious to see what else they kind of change here. Obviously, Super is now on the mozzie, and they've dropped any kind of hard hold on the wall that they were going to do. So they're, I guess, yeah, leaning into more of the aggressive style, potentially going to try and bury more of themselves inside CC and hold that for a little bit longer. And I guess it's seeing what they can make out of these a opening ACOGs. Yeah, it looks like Nets getting ready to do some jump outs in. Yes, you are right. Looks like a kind of a heavier CC hold coming out here. Primarily from Gonfi, he just got that bulletproof cam to support his position, as well as the Maestro cam up onto 90 to see what's going on there as Rogue are going to start their second attack. But things looking pretty good for them overall. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of fair to say, obviously, if their first round, was it was well put together. It was well strung together. Obviously, they haven't got the opening frag as easily this time, but there is them taking care of the Neptune's run out. And that's the thing. They're, they're droning themselves ahead. They're playing with a bit of fire, and it's being able to be... Well, it's responding well. Slebin is practicing um, for an upcoming dance recital. In the meantime, they're just going to try and hold down CC and the half wall as the best as they can. As Slash is going to try and well, steadily... Belly. <laughs> I actually just really like this from Slash. Yeah, he's going to be able to try and make his way in here. It looks like no one's watching my show cam, but no, they will get back on it. Slash goes for the kill, and he gets it. The goddess goes down, and now Slash has control of the site, and we've got everyone tied up around CC. Rogue are going to know that the whole site's clear right now as they do have a lot of control. Super's going to make his way below, however. He does have that Nitro still available to himself, but Slebin's going to find Eclipse, and Gonfi finds Slash Hook. This is a great retake coming out from Sonics, but Brian shuts it down so far. As Gonfi retakes the half wall so far, and uh, Super should be able to make his way back to sight up onto Metal. He's got to be very wary. This kind of angle coming out from easily as well. OP to CC gives a little bit, a little bit, but just about halfway into the round now, we've got plenty of time for Rogue to try to bring this back. They have, of course, got that man advantage. 
Well, with the 90 camera down, they have a little bit more sense of stability. Super's going to try and dig in on Central as much as he can, and he's waiting for the body to get a bit wide and rotate, but Rogue aren't going to take that firefight. Instead, rappel over the top and potentially try and take control from the AC side. In the meantime, Gonfi has found himself dug in with a little bit of an extension into offices, and is going to try and hold against the gridlocks that have otherwise gone down. And, well, Gonfi almost goes down himself as a dock and can get himself back up, as we've just seen, but with Vertical creeping his way around and using that to his advantage, it's a very easy pickup. Oh, only one body left in the side of Super, and unfortunately, he has passed on as well. 2-0 for Rogue, and so far, it's looking very good. Yeah, it is looking all Rogue right now. They're bringing the same lineup every round. They're adapting to what Sonics is putting down. That CC Hulk completely, not dismantled, but just kind of just completely ignored at the end. They had a great push. I think Slasher really just picked it all up there. It's slow, like, last-minute mistakes like that where Goddess wasn't quite on that cam at the right point, and she just gets punished for that. Really good opportunity taken coming out from Slash Hooker okay, to get into half wall and get that control. And again, like opening picks coming out from Rogue, easily getting the opening pick yet again. It's kind of weird to see a secondary support getting two opening picks. Yeah, whether obviously we didn't really see the first and whether it was down to clever standard pre-firing, but the second was a great response to the man mm. that jumped out, which just shows that they are, you know, they have their attention kind of set on these potential, you know, loose and aggressive plays. Talking of, Vigil is now on the board for the first time today, swapped off from the Mozzie. So, you know, one of the things about this game that you're kind of instantly reading on is the lack of portable information that it seems that Sonics are leaning into. They're, they're going with these aggressive holds. They're obviously, they've got the Maestro to have the cameras, which as you said, slightly late usage in the previous round, but they are going up and they are being put in positions. At the same time, you're thinking, well, why aren't they, you know, there's Valkyrie on the board. Yes, there's Mozzie, but it wasn't really, it didn't look like the information was coming through too thick and fast for them. And you're kind of curious how much of this is going in as an attempt at just trying to pick up bodies and how much of this is an attempt at trying to set up just uh, some information kind of backlog to be able to read what Rogue is attempting. So, it's interesting that Sonics would go back to Armory yet again. Most teams, when they've lost a site twice in a row, they will go somewhere else, but yeah. no, not Sonics. They will continue to start to go here and we're, and we're gonna see the CC hole coming out for them. We're gonna see Super on the Vigil here. He's been the main person who's kind of on that kind of like main flex, right? Like he's been changing up his operators every round so far. We're gonna see how that is gonna be working out for him. I'm not sure if the vigil's the correct play here, because like normally I would I would like a vigil here and like a heavy roam. If you know that rogue are gonna do like that downstairs clear. But we haven't seen rogue go downstairs whatsoever right no. now. They haven't brought a book, they haven't brought any kind of nades or anything like that. They're completely unconcerned with doing a downstairs push. They've been very kind of strict on what they're doing as well, Rogue. They've been ha uh, happy to kind of push as a unit and push as a team against the areas that they need to de get control of. So as we see, they're surrounding themselves around CCTV from the repels, but they're not being over aggressive with it. It's so far, not a huge amount of them throwing themselves. They're happy to set up to cover the flanks, push the operators, as we said, which was why Capital was taken off the table because he's so good at it, and then force them to make mistakes. In the meantime, they're controlling space like this as they've done everything round. Throw the tracks down the long corridor and make sure that there's no quick, fast rotations. And at this point, it's just a room by room kind of base is clear. They don't have to do too much underground. And we've already seen an attempt from underground play in a C4 previously, but it was just a little bit late to the rip. In the meantime, Slebber first off the table oh. as Super goes for a quick run out and does find one, and, but e easily has also found Gonfi at the same time. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a good kill coming out from Super. Eclipse going to go down very early on. Neptune's with a long angle through onto Fountain, but isn't going to be able to find a pick from here. But Super's roam, while successful, CC Hold does get dismantled by Rogue, and they have that control now. And they have a minute left to work with as well. The only issue for them now is how are they going to get Goddess out from behind that half wall position? She's got a gun up, but there goes Neptune's. A great pick coming up from Vertical. Now they have a lot of control. Super comes up the east stairs. There goes Goddess. It's all down to Super in a 1v4 to try and bring this in right now. Tries to go for the run onto east stairs, but doesn't manage to find anyone just yet as Brian goes for the plan of the diffuser, but all the way from the break room angle. I love that angle from Slasher. As Rogue take their third consecutive round here on border. And I got to say, Rogue are looking way more confident than they were in their last OG game. You know, we kind of briefly talked about the mental state of teams in this situation and how you kind of want to go out. Because arguably, to them, they've both gone out in a way. They're out of Pro League, they're playing in CL, they know it as far as, you know, is aware on the team's basis for the next season. So how do you run this final tournament? What is your swan song lap? And 
Rogue are showing up so far. This is the best that we've seen them play in the entire tournament up to this point, obviously. And it's the best that you've kind of seen them play in a while. They're really, really lighting up as their attack strategies. Everything's kind of falling together for them. And, you know, Sonics just seem a little bit to the wind right now. Everything's a bit too spread out. There's not really a huge amount of, as I said before, where the information's being covered, but the bodies sure aren't. And it's kind of Rogue just picking them apart. It's a good adaptation coming out from Vertical as he's brought the Nomad along instead of Gridlock. I think at this point, maybe Rogue are thinking, okay, they're going to go downstairs now because they brought the castle. Because they've never brought castle before. But also, um, because of that run out from Super, they lost a, they lost yep. a man to that one. And yeah, I think Nomad's good at kind of controlling that early aggression coming out from Sonics. It's something that Rogue has always struggled to deal with, especially during that Okami game. Yeah. So... I do like the Nomad pick here, and kind of also Rogue just staying ahead of the curve. They've also obviously, as Goddess has picked up the castle, swapped off the Maestro to Neptune, who's now going to be picking up that kind of mantle, and Slebin is on the Bandit. So the entire Sonics roster is generally, you know, they're obviously they're taking a different point, but this is a point where in a lot of ways you can hold it in a similar fashion. You try and keep the vertical for as long as possible. It's a top-heavy defense. Yes, you do extend underneath, and you can limit the movement with the castle, depending on whether you want to put them around the kind of bathroom side or whether you want to throw them upstairs. And it seems like Goddess is going to be playing towards the customs and detention area anyway, but it, it's, you know, it's the basic breakdown. It looks like Slebin dug in with the bandit is just going to try and hold on above <laughs> for a little bit longer. Oh, no. oh dear. That's an unhappy face coming out from Goddess, unfortunately. <laughs> well, we'll see how things go down as we move into round number four. Sonic's yet to find a round in their defense, and if they don't start finding one soon, things are not looking good for them. And meanwhile, Rogue have already taken CC control. Things are looking very good for themselves as they start to dismantle the defense coming out from Sonics. And honestly, this is Rogue just looking at the setup coming out from Sonics and saying, okay, they're holding a bit on CC. They're doing this kind of extended hold. Let's just dismantle that first and make our way throughout the building. This is looking really good for Rogue already. They've got a lot of control. And I think Rogue have done pretty well to do that early in the rounds. Well, yet again, we see more of the angles being held and more of the attempted shepherding. That has so far been pretty good in terms of how Rogue has taken control of what Sonics is doing. Gonfi and Slebin, the partnership from EU, is looking to try and hold no on to this side. And there is another run out and another body from exactly the same place. They do pick up the refrag this time. Brian covering the door and able to swing round, but they've lost the Zephyr. So those... Well, the Maestro, uh, Maestro cams are going to be a little bit more of Ash's problem at this point. There's still a fair bit of work left to do, however. Absolutely amazed there was no air jab on that front door. Super's done that twice now, and he's gotten away with it. Well, he's not gotten away with it, but he's gotten fragged both times. Same so, person as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's Same not victim. good. Oh, good. Feels bad for Eclipse. But he will get traded, as you said, and that is a nitro off the board for Sonic, so... All well and said, that is good as Vert picks up one of his own and starts to dismantle the defense coming up for Sonic. So we've got Goddess left alone in sight. We see Slebin and Gonfi both heading up from both the EU duo. They're starting to get dismantled a little bit. Gonfi gets a little bit lit up on the cross as he comes back to the server hatch to see what he can do from there. Slash trying to push up on the door onto Armory. Sonics are looking pretty good so far, even though they're a man disadvantage right now. And another one for Vertical. Hey, never mind. This is looking horrible right now for Sonics as they lose yet another one. So hold on to the GSG9 duo to try and bring this in. Slevin trying to push through onto Armory. Chasing for find one. He finds one, but no. Instantly does get traded out. Slash Hook takes him down. And it's all down to Gonfi to try and bring this in. Brian goes for the plant of the diffuser in a 3v1. So hold on to Gonfi. See what he can do. Well, he's creeping around, but unfortunately it leads to nothing. It's the first time the diffuser's gone down, however, as we find ourselves dumping down to the uh, vent points, the first first floor point of the entire game. So, you know, it shows more of a comfort from Rogue. The change of points, the change of scenery hasn't really been anything that's affected them. As you said, they six pick off before they read into the castle and read into the change of pace. You know, and that's something that they're doing very, very well throughout this game. They're kind of reading everything that Sonics is throwing up and... You know, whether it's a mix of the prep that they've had left over or whether it's just this is the day that they want to show up. Whichever the weather, it's looking very good for them. Sonics, they're going to return to Armory. Fourth time's the charm, hoping. Yeah, I mean, as much as I want to say that Brogue are looking really good here, which they are, they've done well so far, this is looking horrific for Sonics right now. I mean, you're thinking you're not able to win the two core sites on border when arguably this should be defender-sided right now. I mean, okay, okay. 
I get that this is Rogue's map pick, right? And they should be winning border. They are a decent border team. But almost every team should understand how to play border at this point. And we've seen some adaptation come out from Sonics. We've seen some sort of different stuff come out from them. Gomfy bringing the Valkyrie, I quite like. As I yeah. said, I, I thought that was a big kind of missed step in the previous thing. Obviously, Super's rotated background to the Bandit that he played in the very first round. And, you know, for me, this reads more like a slightly more put together defense of what they're attempting upstairs. Because as I said, they're trying to keep their bodies a little bit separate, trying to keep a bit of a wider control on this top floor with maybe one or two shoulder covers. And it's not really coming together because Rogue are reading into it very well. So just give yourself a little bit more information about what Rogue are doing. Give yourself a little bit more you can play with and hopefully it'll kind of come together. Neptune's trying something quick, early, and aggressive, and I guess we'll see if it can find a body. They've slowed their roll. The outline of vertical takes a little bit of a breather, but who knows who's going to potentially drift in first. There is the drone that gets taken out. Oh. And Gomfi finds Slash on the floor below. The double-tiered peek towards the side. I believe that's... I don't know. That's the second opening frag that's gone into the favor of Sonics, I believe. Second and right, yeah. Yeah, so... But we'll see Neptune's busting and picking up one of his own as well. Brian is going to go down. That is the Thermite and the Ash, both off the board. Both the FBI are probably going down. Rogue unable to deal with this heavy aggression coming out from Sonics right now. A lot more confident coming out from them. This is exactly what we want to see from Sonics and exactly the issue that Rogue normally has. As there we go, the Bandit of Super from below will find Eclipse once more. And this is looking horrible for Rogue as they lose another one in the long peak as well. Neptune finds a double kill and it's all down to easily to try and bring it in in a 1v5. Oh, he finds one. There goes Slebin. Let's see if we can find four more. Well, he's deadly trying to make something out of nothing with Super on a fraction of health from this point. It's just a matter of seeing if they can then begin to collapse down upon it. The default cam still up a bit later in the day to try and take care of that, but I guess when you've got a minute 40, you can go for some slightly wider rotates and slightly better positions. The drop down is still intact of offices, so it allows a bit of a big rotate here towards the size. That there, yet again, there's another default cam and another default cam. It shows just how far Rogue didn't really get into the building. Swings through onto offices, but there is Super to end the run and the round and give themselves one, but... Well, now they've got to opt for another point, and Vents didn't quite go their way. I think if Sonics just continue to be aggressive and kind of bring out their inner Okami, I think they can really actually start to bring this back. The heavy aggressive play and just the peak everything mental attitude, Rogue have consistently just not been able to deal with whatsoever. And it's not like we have any bad players on Sonics, really. Slebin, Gomfi, Neptunes, definitely really well-known fraggers throughout EU and NA, respectively. So, you know, I think this honestly, like, a peak everything strategy could actually work quite well for them. We'll see if they stick with that one, however. So you go, as you said, to events and workshop. Rogue should be aware of this, however, and we will see the Nomad coming out from them. Yeah, the thing about Nomad, obviously, they brought her the past couple of rounds, and she hasn't quite had an effect that you would, well, hope for and expect for. The one run out door that was tried twice was effective even the round when Nomad was bought the second time round. And then, obviously, previously, you know, they didn't quite get any real glimpses of control. See, so you're wondering when Vert is going to be trying to, or where as well, Vert is going to be trying to put those down and what they're actually trying to get as their semblance of control against the point. If Sonics find one more round before they swap to their attack, that'd be a big breath of fresh air hitting it as a 4-2 isn't, well, isn't as pretty, isn't as tough as a 5-1, really. And I guess it's down to see if Rogue can take this with the same ferocity that they took this on the previous time round here. Goddess extending control with the castles down below, and the Jaeger's going to try and, again, keep some uh, control just on that little kind of connector as Slebin does some free-fall dancing. So, Rogue can go again for their CC hold and everything like that. I do like the kind of opening of the sidelines here so that Sonics can at least impact trick or even Nitro deny that hatch on CC. So if Rogue do this CC hold again and Super runs out this front door and kills Eclipse yet again, I'm going to lose my mind that they allow him to do that when they still have a Nomad on the board. I, I'm going to say he won't, but you never really know. You uh, never know. You never really know. It's, uh, obviously, it's not brought uh, the Vigil this time around. He's fallen back to something a little bit more defensive, but with the SMG-11, some people can make that absolute well, mincemeat of anyone that crosses the fire. Still doing some point destruction as Slebin looks for something filthy through a bullet hole just under the barricade, but unfortunately no dice as of yet. 
waiting on the supply room, waiting for someone to drift by. He could be there for a little bit of time, but there is, well, a couple of outlines and a couple of bodies drifting. There's the opportunity, but does not hit it. Oh, God, that is really unfortunate timing there from Slobin. He lost his sight line as the cross did come through. Super getting ready for kind of some sort of push onto Vent's window, and I think he's... This is a good position to have, I think, honestly. Like playing aggressively here with the shotgun, very hard to contest right now. Drones will confirm that he is there, however, and he's going to recognize that as well. Sonic's still all five people up right now, but Rogue are going to gain that vertical control. As Slash Oak destroys his own teammate's drone. That's unfortunate. Well, able to crack open the hatch. They try and impact Ooh. trick it, but a little bit too little, too late, and too wide there, as they're just going to swing wide and try and find a body. In the meantime, Vertical's there to try and keep control of the staircases as they want some destruction over above the vents point itself. And Eclipse actually successfully repels that time. Super isn't there to take them apart before they can make their feet land on these sidelines. Here comes more of this collective close down from Rogue as Slash opens up against Neptunes and puts the first body down. And with the Maestro off, that's a big control, hoping that the cameras are still facing the right way because that is their only real information. Yeah, 5v4, not looking too good for Sonics altogether right now. They are quite spread out on their defense. We have the upstairs control going into the favor of Rogue as they try to make their way into CC and clear all of this out. Green Fire is coming down as well, but they've lost a lot of time, right? But Slash Hook does manage to get his entry kill. There goes Slab, and that's an important player off the board from Sonics as they start to make their way in. Do you see do you have that CC control right now with Slash Hook? Disc get one onto Goddess as well. That's a triple kill for Slash Hook on the board as there's only two members of Sonics left remaining on the board. But a lot of time is still in this favor of Sonic says. Gonfi does get that kill into vertical, shuts down and push. And will come through the flank as well. Super still holding down Cypress. Brian will start to go for the plant. Nitro will go out. That will confirm Brian. That will deny the plant as well. This is looking really good for Sonic. It's all down to Super to try and bring this in. They know where he is, but he's got control of the diffuser. He sees one. He gets the eclipse kill. He's going to push all the way deep in. He easily tries to contest with him. The shotgun goes through. He does find one. That's another one for Super. But he gets traded and Rogue take the round. He clinch it out. A quadra kill from Slash Hugger, 4k on the round. Absolutely beautiful work from Slash Hugger in the vertical play. Yeah, well, I think that was Slash Hugger versus Super in a battle of time there more than anything. That was an unbelievable attempt from Super to pull a round that was completely swaying against them back into his favor. But in the meantime, Slash, great reaction and great ability to pick apart the man below who almost got away with, well, the heist of the century. Swapping over the halves now, 5-1, and it seems like in the past couple of rounds, Sonics have at least started to wake up a little bit. We're seeing a bit more coordination, a bit more aggression, and a bit more, well, hope that they can bring this board around back to their favor. In the meantime, obviously, I guess we'll see how Rogue adapt, bringing Maestro, Mozzie, and Valkyrie, a triple threat of information. However, I guess we'll see if that gets sixth pick off, because they've yeah, they've dabbled in the sick pick. In the meantime, Super, who has been a consistent sick picker, has swapped out the Nomad for the Gridlock. Two different styles of roam control. You know interesting? Sonics are bringing the exact same lineup that Rogue have been bringing, for the most part. It's the same strap. They're yeah, learning. Yeah. Learning from each other going, well, it works for them. I mean... <laughs> For me, Neptunes is a really, really good book player, and normally this is a map where you see a decent amount of book play, but we don't seem to see too much of that recently on border, at least not in North America anyway. We see a very kind of uh, site-centric push, but we'll see how Rogue wants to respond with this. Also bringing a very similar lineup to what Sonics were bringing in their defenses, and we will see a CC hold coming out from them. Well, I'm curious to see, obviously, how Slash decides to play this dog, because as we've already seen similar plays between the pair of teams, and similar kind of setup sometimes, and yeah, I doubt we'll potentially see the same level of aggression, but at the same time, you know, you put one of these guns in the hands of Slash, well, he can do stuff like he might be about to attempt now. The kind of aggressive runouts, the ability to take a head off from, you know, 100 meters, and kind of get your way back to a bit of safety. Sees the information coming out and it's going to go for the wide swing, but unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately, just misses the timing and misses the head, but enough to put a little bit of fear into the approaching Sonics as they start their collapse down below, it seems like. Goddess is going to start uh, trying to put some pressure alongside. Um, well, he's actually going to drone ahead, and there's the run out from the Valk. Finds one, and Slebin is off the table. Vertical. Kind of, you know, a little bit of payback for how the previous rounds were going. 
think that run out is way better than the run out that Sonics were doing with Super Green in the front door. But yeah, was able to get that early frag as well. He still has that Nitro pressure from below as well on top of all of that. So things looking very, very good for Rogue here with an opening pick onto Celebin. Of course, that Super Power player going down very early on. Just about a minute into the round now, Sonics don't really have to seem too much control right now. They don't have anything open and they're quite spread out in their defense. In their offense, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, they were spread I mean, out. They were spread out on their defense to be fair, as well, so yeah. It's, it's a fair point. Just, well, Super's trying to find the way in and I guess the way to keep control of Office Wall and make sure that Trip doesn't guess or become another run out possibility. With Neptune's trying to take a bit of close coordination here, gonna drop the Claymore and let that fall down, but Goddess is on a bit of a oh. repel battle and it was only really gonna go one way. You know that they're playing those plays and the amount of bodies that just fell to the blue is, well, not fantastic. Neptune's misses the rotate of the man, but when you're the only one left, maybe a little bit of secrecy about your position might go a good way. There is the final pickup on the body, but the crossfire is there and so is match point. This is looking absolutely incredible for Rogue. I'm honestly not feeling good about this series right now for Sonics because no matter what happens in this map, if Sonics pull the turnaround of the century here and somehow bring this into overtime, which I think is very unlikely, but it definitely could happen. We go to Cafe. I'm not sure this is a great map for Sonics, honestly, in recent history. We did see them we did see them beat Rogue here though. Yeah, that's the thing about it. It was obviously the 7-5 Rogue on it um, not too long ago, but then they've come off the back of a 1-7 on it, and it really depends, as we've mentioned a couple of times, how the mental game comes through, because as we said, Rogue have woken up today. They're playing more akin to what we're kind of used to seeing under the name of Rogue, and they're really lighting up their attacks. Their defenses are aggressive, but it still has a semblance of balance in and amongst it, so it's really, really nice to see. Whereas Sonic's... I, you know, it seems like they're kind of, I guess they're not really playing to the level where we saw them when they were beating Rogue. I uh, I like this pick coming out from Super. I call this the Talon play. Mm. Talon, when he IGL for tunes last season of CL, season nine, he would often switch onto the, on, onto the Twitch when he felt like his team weren't fragging. So I like the, you know, the F2 play coming out from Super. Her. The first Twitch we've actually seen this series which is, I think, interesting given Rogue's somewhat aggressive playstyle with Slash Hook on the, uh, on the entry. Slash has been playing a lot of entry this series, which I think he's definitely been doing a lot of since Brian now came back into the, into the scene of things. We've seen him play Ash, now he's playing Jaeger, he's playing Doc last round, so... Have fun with it. Yeah. Find bodies, find kills. <laughs> well, we'll have a look how this sick pick onto the Twitch will go through for Sonics, and if this is gonna work out well for them, but Rogue with a very aggressive lineup here, it looks like. Definitely like the Into, Intel lineup coming out from them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the kind of breakdowns that I mentioned a couple of times is the Intel and the information is something that can kind oh. of make or break this. As we see Slash get Goddess, that's get off the, the Thermite off the board, and you're trading that against the Jaeger, that is the best trade to ever make. That is such a good trade. And, you know, at this point, it's down to Rogue to kind of capitalize upon this. Yeah, definitely. Eclipse, however, is going to start to do that. Neptune's just go down, but the trades will start to come through. Gonfi moves in. He gets a double kill and completely clears out this CC. Sorry, this Customs Control. And they'll recover the Diffuser as well on top of that. Sonic's looking a little bit better here in a 3v2. Rogue at a man disadvantage right now, but they still have easily. And of course, Vircal still up on the board. And there's still match points. So things are looking good for them. But Sonic's have got plenty of time to work with. And that Gonfi double entry kill onto Customs may have just saved them the round. Well, there's some drone work coming out. The Twitch drone looked like it kind of wanted blood there a little bit, so... Unfortunately, didn't quite find any. In the meantime, Purple and Easily are going to double oh. up and they're going to find a firefight against each other. Unfortunately, Easily a little bit spooked by the spooky man of Vigil and tries to kill him. I guess that's Halloween still for you. There's a big a bit of firefight coming out on the far side. That was Easily find Super on the back of the push, but Slevin managed to get it down. And yet again, it's down to the EU pairing of Slevin and Gonfi who rotate around as Vigil tries to go fishing from above Easily. Putting more and more bullets into the man inside point, but they can't quite find the kill as the aggressive push <laughs> comes against them, hits the grenade, hits the shotgun even, but the man lies down and, well, he just becomes another body and with two thirds of the diffuser time left and the person already pushing against you from either side, well, it was a bit of a misnomer there as we look like we're set.
for this first map to come to an end. So I, I laughed there because both players went prone, expecting the other guy to push the other person. Yep. <laughs> you know, I always love that, you gotta love it. But easily with the super short, you gotta close things out. And it is gonna be all Rogue and a 7 1, very dominant map coming out from them. Of course, this was Rogue's map pick, so no surprises really too much coming out there. Um, with a very, very strong half, however, for Rogue. Cafe is looking a bit uncertain here. I think, honestly, if we see a Thatcher ban from Sonics, maybe we're not going to see how it is going to be going down, but we're going to have that coming up in just a moment, just after this breaks. Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.